I said in the previous video, I'm gonna say it again. This is one of the greatest Italian red wines that nobody knows about. Again, maybe not nobody, but relatively few people besides hardcore wine geeks. We're talking about Montefalco Rosso, but in this case, Montefalco Rosso Reservas. In the previous video, I blind tasted 12 Montefalco Rosso's. If you haven't watched it, check it out. I'll put in the link below. Here we have the Reservas. Montefalco Rosso Reservas need to be between 60 and 80% Sangiovese. They can be 10 to 25% Sagrantino and then some other grape varieties, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Colorino. In practice, I generally find more Sangiovese is used. Reservas need to be aged for at least 30 months before the release and 12 of those months must be in oak barrels. These wines are a little pricier than the Montefalco Rosso's as you'll see as we start to reveal them. But again, I think they are outstanding wines. We have a few different producers in the previous video. Again, I don't wanna go on and on about Umbria. Just watch the previous video. It's in the center of Italy. It's the greenest region in Italy. Very pastoral, beautiful rolling hills, very underrated wines. You're gonna want to check out that region if you wanna find some value. Let's get it. Once again, tasting out of my Gabriel Glass Standard Edition. Universal Glasses, love this glass. I have a link in the description below. Helps the channel if you purchase with that link. So thank you so much. The previous video, there were 12 wines, so I tasted each one and then revealed immediately after I tasted it. We only have six wines here, so I'm gonna taste them all together, then I'm gonna reveal them. Fair? I wanna see what you like better. But to even it out a little bit, I'm gonna just use one glass instead of two. Montefalco Rosso's, which I like so much, is because they're heavily based on Sangiovese. However, that little touch of Sagrantino adds enough uniqueness, distinctiveness to make them different from other Sangiovese based wines. Wine number one already smells nice. I just f shot the Montefalco Rosso video. Already this wine, I think they're gonna be a little more intense, a little bit more complex. Red fruit, it comes right at me. Well integrated wood. The white pepper is just brilliant here. This has a Marciano cherry component. Whereas the Montefalco Rosso's, the alcohol, even though they can climb, it didn't really come off. This smells a little hotter, not that it's unbalanced, but I can tell it's a bigger wine. Sagrantino is a big tannic high alcoholic grape, so it can drive up the alcohol volume in these wines, but there's so much Sangiovese that the wines feel lighter than they actually are. Already stepping into big boy territory. Number one's outstanding. Bright red fruit, complexities come together, length, the tannins, they just kind of massage your palate round. Number one is outstanding, an outstanding wine. Get me really excited. Wine two, is more candied fruit. Okay, hold on a second. Hold on, wines change as you, as you sniff on them. But it's darker fruit, kind of a stripped down type of wine, more minimal intervention type wine. More raw, It's it goes sour cherry to black cherry. <sighs> Got this little mocha component, not wood. This is intense wine. It just smells really nice. Uh, these wines are good. <laughs> While wine two is more sour, transitioning to dark fruit, number three is all red fruit. The red fruit sticks out. It doesn't have as much of that cedar earthy type notes that the previous two had. Wine three is fruity, it's crispy, it's clean. Yeah, it doesn't lack character. Sometimes these clean wines can be kind of boring. They're made in a uniform way. These first three wines are really splitting hairs. I mean, they're all pretty similar in quality. Almost identical, to be honest. I was actually more excited to do the Montefalco Rosso video, but as you can see, my excitement's rising because these wines are pretty darn extraordinary. Wine four, also more black cherry type flavor. Again, got to use the hand trick. My palate was getting a little fatigued. Twisted 12 Montefalco Rosso's. Sniff your skin, it kind of balances out your palate, resets your neurology. Cedar, cedar, cedar here with mocha and black cherry. No sour cherry here, a little bit denser. Take a little sippy sip of that. I'm telling you, some of these wines are knockouts, all four of them so far. In the Montefalco Rosso video, there was a big stylistic difference in between the wines. A wine two is the only one that's a little bit different than the other ones. These are real subtle differences. You're not gonna go wrong with any of the first four. They're all extraordinary wines. Five is the most Sangiovese-esque. A little bit more floral red fruit. God, these are awesome. This is just smells to me like quintessential good Sangiovese. That's the only way I can put it. I don't think I've ever done a video where the wines are so similar. Very, very similar in terms of quality. I don't mean to cop out, but man, they are really close here. Let's go down to wine six. Six also smells stripped down, but it smells really exciting. <sighs> <laughs> Black cherry, sour cherry. I just opened a bottle of Modena Aceto. If you've ever had real hardcore Modena vinegar, the real thing, it's more fruity, it's a little sweet. That's what this smells like. Not more vinegar, more actually fruity. This has gotta be one of the minimal intervention ones. I can just really smell the fruit here. Lively, tangy, that's a brilliant wine. <laughs> 
Okay, here, I'm not copping out. All these wines are extraordinary. My scores here are 93 to 94 plus. Wine one, big, red fruit, really long. It's all you can say. It's what I started out the tasting with. It, it's tied with wine number four. You're not gonna lose with any of these wines. They're all brilliant, 93 points. I love it, I wanna drink it. Um, this is the Benedetti Grigi Estia Montefalco Rosa Reserva. This is bottle number nine of 5,035 bucks. Sangiovese, Sagrantino Merlot. I don't have the exact breakdown. 2019, fairly new producer. I met the winemaker, Matteo. I was talking with my friend because I visited the producer and then he visited the day later and he was like, I was really impressed with the wines. I am too. I think this is an extraordinary wine. Very nice job. Wine number four was more on the black cherry spectrum but man, it was just good. It was really fruity. It was delicious. 93 points. This is the Lungarotti Montefalco Rosso Reserva 2019 Sangiovese Sagrantino Merlot, 29 bucks in the US. Lungarotti is one of the founding members of this wine called Torgiano, which is nearby, also a Sangiovese-based wine. It's actually Sangiovese, Colorino, Mamolo, basically a Chianti Classico type blend there. Masters at that Appalachian Torgiano, tasted some old wines from there, extraordinary. They make only the Rosso Reserva because they wanted to elevate the image of Montefalco Rosso. I think they're doing an extraordinary job. 15% alcohol, I did not feel it. 29 bucks, 93 points, I think this is outstanding wine. When I first went to the Ante Prima a couple of years ago, I was with my friend who's a British wine writer, Paul Caputo. He has a site, Vinerandum. I'll put the link below, really like the guy. We get into deep philosophical, maybe even two geeky conversations about wine. And I said, I like Montefalco Rosso more than Montefalco Sagrantino, although Montefalco Sagrantino can be great. And I remember him saying, in essence, that's saying that you like Sangiovese more than Sagrantino. I looked him dead in the eye and I said, yeah. Number five, Central Italian to a T. That's the only way I could describe it. 93 plus points. Just when I smell it, you would automatically think Tuscany, Umbra. You probably would automatically think Sangiovese, 93 points. Let's take a look here. This is the Romanelli Molinetta. So a single vineyard puzzle, 2018 Montefalco Rosa Reserva, 30 bucks. This is 65% Sangiovese, 20% Merlot, 15% Sagrantino, 30 bucks. And I know this is available in the US. I know this is more of a minimal intervention producer. I visited him two years ago. I didn't visit him this year at the end of Prima. Wine's showing strong. I think they're excellent, worth checking out. One of the few producers too that I think makes Sagrantino approachable young. Very nice wine. I have it tied with number two at 93 plus points. That was so unusual for me because it was sour cherry transitioning to black cherry, but it had a strong mocha component. Man, I, I I didn't want to cop out and give all these wines exact same score, but I was pretty much there with all of them and I'm serious. But anyways, 93 plus points. Let's take a look here. This is the Arnaldo Capri Montefalco Rosso Reserva. This is the most expensive wine at 45 bucks. You're getting what you're paying for here. This is the most widely available too. 70% Sangiovese. I know it's their best Sangiovese plots. 15% Sagrantino, 15% Merlot. Arnaldo Capri is one of the producers that put Montefalco back on the map, thanks to doing excellent work with the Sagrantino. The infamous Michelle Roland is the consultant there. They're producing over a million bottles a year. I think the quality is outstanding for the amount of quantity that they're putting out. Very nice job on that wine. I always am gonna have a soft spot for Arnaldo Capri because I remember one time in Singapore, we did a blind tasting where a bunch of us brought just random wine bottles. We all blind tasted, we had a really nice dinner and I brought an aged Arnaldo Capri 25th anniversary Sagrantino to the event and it was the wine of the night made me look good. So, <laughs> so uh, good job, Anala Capri. Number six, lively, tangy. I thought it was more of a minimal intervention style of wine, kind of that stripped down wine, but it had a lot of character. I gave it 94 points. I think it's very good. 94 points. This is the Fongoli Sepulo. Sepulo means serpent. Montefalco Rosa Reserva. 2015, so I have some age. I didn't even pick up the age. This is unusual for Montefalco Rosso. One of the few I've seen 60% Sangiovese, 20% Sagrantino, and 20% Motopulciano. This runs in at 36 bucks. Fungoli, one of the real hardcore minimal intervention producers in Montefalco, along with Paulo Bea. I tried to get a Bea wine, I could not, I'm sorry. This is less heralded than Paulo Bea. I think this Circulo is their best wine, to be honest. Some of their wines can be a little bit mousy. You gotta be hardcore minimal invention. This wine is not excellent. I really bonded with the daughter 
it was just me at the visit. It was my last visit to the Anta Prima. I sat down with her and she was telling me about before the pandemic, she went to the US and worked in an Italian restaurant to improve her English. And it was a high level Italian restaurant and Steve Buscemi actually sat down and had one of her wines. And I remember she told me she was so blown away because her and her father used to watch him and she messaged him right away and he said, stop. Stop, you're playing with me, you're playing with me. <laughs> Great wine, minimal intervention for people that maybe don't like natural wine so much. I thought it was excellent. Let's move on to the top wine, wine number three. Not blind, I thought this was one of the best Montefalco Rosso Reservas in blind. I scored the highest 94 plus points. It was just fruity, clean, super well-made, long, had bright acidity, and uh, I'm impressed once. This is the Antonelli Montefalco Rosa Reserva, 2019, 14.5 alcohol, 30 bucks. I do not know the exact blend on this. I think this is probably heavy on Sangiovese, one of the best producers of Sagrantino as well, so I bet it's probably about 20% Sagrantino. I don't know the exact breakdown. You have to find it. 30 bucks for a wine that's 94 plus points. I think that is extraordinary. <laughs> what a tasting. Tell me, have you had Montefalco Rosso Reservas before? Any favorite producers? Drop it in the comments below. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you soon. Didn't work as well as the glasses.